Okay, wonderful. Um, it looks like we're steady here at uh, joiners. So I am going to get us kicked off. Wonderful, thank you all for joining us for an introduction to Crossref. So um, in this session, we will cover the basics of Crossref, including who we are and what we do. We'll discuss the value and the use of metadata for content discovery and our global equity membership program. Also, we will cover the process of setting up an independent membership and the title transfer process. We'll introduce you to some of the additional services that we offer to our members and end with the Q&A session uh, to answer any questions you may have. If you have a question during the presentation, please write this in the Q&A box, not in the chat, as it's easier for us to keep track of the questions and then others can see what your questions are as well. However, if you'd like to say hello in the chat, please do so and let us know where you're joining from. This webinar will be recorded and we will share the recording and the slides by email within the next few days. So some introductions. I am Rosa Maurice Clark, Communications and Events Manager. And today we will have Chief Guest Professor uh, Kamal joining us, along with Crossref Amb Ambassadors, uh, Dr. Alam and Shaharima Arvin, Susan Collins, our Community Engagement Manager and Sponsor Program Manager, uh, Johansson Obanda, also our Community Engagement Manager, and Robika Rosalin, our Member Support Specialist. We're here uh, to help you understand Crossref and answer any questions you may have. This is our mission statement. Crossref makes research outputs easy to find, cite, link, assess, and reuse. We're a not-for-profit membership organization that exists to make scholarly communications better. It's as simple and as complicated as that. We have a distributed team of 43 staff located in the US, UK, Europe, Kenya, and Indonesia. This includes our membership team, finance, research and development, technical support, product management, and the team with you today is from our community engagement team. Now Crossref is a membership organization and membership is open to organizations that produce professional and scholarly materials and content. We work with a diverse group of over 20,000 members and affiliated organizations from approximately 150 countries. Our members include research institutions, commercial publishers, universities, libraries, funders, et cetera. And to date, our members have registered metadata for over 144 million content items with us. These include journal articles, books and chapters, reports, standards and grants, just to name a few. And we offer a wide array of services to ensure that scholarly research, research metadata is registered, linked, and distributed. When members join their content, when members join, they register their content with us. They assign it a digital object identifier or a DOI. And we collect that metadata about that piece of content. We process this metadata so that the connections can be made between publications, people, organizations, and other associated outputs. And then we preserve the metadata we receive for the scholarly record. And we make it openly available across a range of interfaces and formats so that the community, the community can use it and build tools with it. And why do organizations decide to join Crossref? Well, the primary reason is to become part of a global connected network of scholarly research. And this allows them to show people where their content is located and update that information with persistent identifiers. Uh, when this content moves. By creating a persistent identifier for each object, it enhances the discoverability of their publications through robust metadata, making their content more likely to be found. And Crossref membership also offers benefits such as the ability to determine who is using their content and the opportunity to participate in other collaborative services. Furthermore, the metadata provided by our members powers a variety of additional services that we've developed here at Crossref. Benefiting both, benefiting both our members and the wider academic community. So there are numerous compelling reasons to join and become a part of our community. So with that, I will hand it over to Susan who will talk to you about the value and the use of metadata. Susan. Thank you, Rosa. And again, welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today. So we just heard Rosa talk about one of the benefits of joining Crossref is to improve discoverability of publications. <clears throat> Excuse me. So how does this happen? Well, it happens with the metadata that our members send to us. 
So content registration allows members to register a DOI for an item and deposit its associated metadata. So when you join Crossf as a member, you're issued a DOI prefix. You combine this with a suffix, which creates a DOI. And then the DOI is just one piece of the metadata that's sent to us. So members maintain and update metadata for the long term, and they tell us if the content moves like to a new website, and they can include more information as time goes on. So that means there's a growing chance that the content is going to be found, cited, linked to, and used by other researchers. So when registering content, members send us a wide range of metadata. And this can include basic metadata like titles, authors, publication date, issue number, ISSN, sort of anything that describes the content that's being registered. It also includes the DOI and the URL that are associated with that item. So we also collect additional data about items, and that can include things like reference lists, funding data, ORCIDs and ROARs, license data, um, information on errata, retractions, and updates can be registered through our Crossmark service. So the metadata that's sent is going to vary based on the type of content that's being registered. A journal article and a book are going to have different metadata requirements. But we do ask that you send us as much metadata as possible and that it be accurate and clean. The more comprehensive the metadata is, the more likely your content is going to be discovered. However, this is only true if the metadata is accurate. So members shouldn't worry about including information that they're not really sure about. Records can always be updated later. And we strongly encourage you to do that whenever you might find out more metadata that you wish to add to a record. So why is comprehensive metadata so important? Well, it's because so many organizations and researchers use that metadata to find content. Because process metadata is standardized and machine readable, it's quite useful to many organizations who use it to create tools and services to make content more discoverable. And these include uh, author profiling tools, manuscript tracking systems, library discovery services, metrics providers, um, and, a, and a number of other types of organizations. And we receive over 600 million queries to our metadata per month across all of our search interfaces. So what does metadata do? Well, it actually does quite a bit. And we're gonna talk about four things here that metadata enables. So we've heard about discoverability. The more metadata you include, the easier it is for others to search and discover it. Um, a few examples of how. Um, we recently had a books metadata project that showed that books with basic metadata are more likely to come up in searches in Google Scholar. And journal articles with deposited references seem to be cited more often than those without. Um, next is reproducibility. Researchers need to be able to build upon each other's work. So verifying, verifying and reproducing results from earlier works is helped by metadata such as linking to funding or protocols, research data, and peer reviews. These all help to create a complete picture of a work. Uh, additionally, metadata also helps determine the integrity of research. Who funded that research? What are the affiliations of the authors? And could there be conflicts of interest? And then finally, reporting and assessment may be carried out by a variety of organizations, and these include universities and funders. Um, and, this, and you can use it to show accountability, benefits of public investment, benchmarking information, compliance with funder mandates. So including such things as ROARs, ORCIDs, funding and grant information, links to preprints, all of this helps with funding and assessment of content. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about our Global Equitable Membership or GEM program. So over the years, uh, we've heard from various communities about some of the challenges they face when looking to join CrossF. And though the reasons might differ by region, it's generally a combination of financial, language, and technical barriers. But we know that for some costs is probably the largest barrier to joining. And so our GEM program was created to help lower this barrier. So in the past, we had a limited fee assistance program that waived content registration fees for members working under specific partner arrangements. Some of you worked through INASP, which was part of that program. 
Um, but the partners were, were kind of limited in scope. And so taking from the experiences of these partnerships, we expanded the program to provide greater membership equitability and accessibility to organizations located in some of the least economically advantaged countries. And so this new program now encompasses the annual fee as well as the content registration fees. So eligibility for the GEM program is based on a member's country. And our list of countries is based on the International Development Association or IDA list um, from the World Bank. And that uses uh, World Bank income classifications, but also some other criteria of economic health, like GNI per capita and credit worthiness. Um, we reviewed this program with the World Bank, who is also a CROSSF member, um, and they also prioritize IDA countries in their own strategies for access and support. So the list goes in an annual review. Um, countries may be added over time as economic situations change. So we started this program um, in January, just a couple of months ago. Um, and since the program began, we've had over 50 new members that were able to join CrossRef um, as part of the GEM program. So what does GEM cover? So GEM members pay no annual fee and no content registration fees. And that applies whether you register 10 DOIs or 1,000 DOIs. There's no cost for that. Um, there's no hidden fees. And most of our services have no additional costs. There are two exceptions to that. And there are two services that do have fees that are not covered by GEM, but both are optional and are not required for any member. So our similarity check service is a, is a service we run in partnership with Turnitin um, which is used to screen, screen for plagiarized text. Um, for members who do wish to join that program, there is an administrative fee and there are document checking fees. But again, it's not a required program um, at all. It's totally optional. Um, and then our Metadata Plus service is um, one of our metadata query uh, accounts. And though all of our metadata is freely available um, with our search tools and our APIs, our Metadata Plus service is a premium service which offers access to all metadata in XML and JSON formats with some additional features. But again, it is, it is an optional service. Um, most, most folks can query our, our APIs with, the, um, with our free APIs um, and don't need to, to use the Metadata Plus service. But again, if you just want to become a member and register content with us, there is no fees under the GEM program. Um, and this is just an overview of our membership in South Asia. Um, on the left, you can see the number of organizations, um, and these are the number of accounts or members we have in each country in that area. Um, but additionally, in Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka, um, all three countries were part of or had a, a JOL or J Journal Online program. Um, and so there were a lot of titles being registered through one member account for each of those countries. For example, um, Bangladesh Academy of Sciences, the, the Bangladesh JOL, has over 150 titles. The Nepal JOL, 300, and Sri Lanka, 125. So there's actually a lot more representation in those countries than the, the numbers of accounts or members may indicate. Um, so you note that India and Pakistan are not part of our GEM program. Um, they're not on the IDA list. But the other countries that you see listed here um, are are all included in the GEM program. Okay, so I mentioned we have about 72 members based in Bangladesh and a lot more journal titles registered through the Bangladesh Academy of Sciences. Like I said, about 150 titles at this point. Um, so some of you today or today are already crossed up members through um, the Academy of Sciences, but for anyone who wants to join independently or isn't a member at all, talk a little bit about how you can get started. Um, so all members would need to fill out um, a membership application, um, and this is the link here, um, and we can make this available um, you know, in our chat, and also our slides will be sent out um, afterwards, so you'll have this information again. So the membership application will ask you for um, the name of your organization, the URL of your organization, where your publications are located, and then some contact information, your address, um, contacts for um, technical uh, issues, metadata issues, um, and then at the end is a confirmation that you've read the summary of your obligations as a member. And that's it. That's all you have to, to complete. 
Um, once we receive your application, you'll get a welcome email from our membership team that has um, the prefix that you will use to create your DOIs, um, your login and instructions um, and how to create a password, and then links to access the different content registration tools. And then over time, you'll get follow on emails um, with additional information um, about other services, about voting, um, and other help to get you along your way with your journey with Crossref. So there are a lot of types of content that can be registered with us. Most people know that DOIs are used for journal articles, but we accept all types of content that you see listed here. And each content type has a unique set of metadata and format in our metadata schema. And members don't need to let us know um, what type of content they're registering or if they're adding a new type of content or a new title. You can use the same prefix for all content types. About 75% of our content is journal articles, um, followed by about 15% of books. And our newest type of content is grants. So CrossFit members register their content with us in a number of different ways. So all metadata that comes to us is held in our system as XML. And members can choose to register their content by sending us XML files directly, or if they aren't able to do that, we do have some helper tools available. And these helper tools collect the metadata and turn it into XML behind the scenes. So um, our web deposit form is one example of a helper tool. And for members who host their content on the OJS platform from PKP, there's a Crossref plugin to help you add in your metadata and then register with us. So we're gonna go into more detail on content registration next week um, during our second webinar of the series. And I am now gonna turn it over to my colleague Obanda, who's going to talk about some of the additional services that Crossref offers to members. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, great, and I'm gonna talk to you about additional services. So as well as registering content, there are many additional services available to you as a member. Most of them are available at no cost. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, these four services, uh, reference linking, cited by, similarity check, and crossmark. First, for reference linking, it makes it possible for readers to follow a DOI link from the reference list of a published work to the location of the full text document on a member's publishing platform thereby building a network infrastructure that enhances scholarly communication on the web. Reference linking means including cross of DOIs displayed as URLs when you create your citation list, and it enables researchers to follow a link from a reference list to other full text documents, helping them to make connections and discover new things. And because it's a DOI rather than just a link, it will remain persistent. And next service is a cited by service. And researchers cite the work of other people to support the material they have used when writing their articles. It helps to be able to see which articles are citing an article that you are reading and how the researchers continue to, to develop their ideas. This is the main function of Cited By. Uh, shows the number of citations and links to the publications that cite the article. Cited By allows members to show authors and readers that other Crossref content has cited their content. Uh, it requests this information from Crossref and then display it on your website in whatever format you like. The next service is Similarity Check. Our Similarity Check service helps Crossref members prevent scholarly and professional plagiarism by providing immediate feedback regarding a manuscript similarity to other published academic and general web content through a reduced access rate to the Authenticate Text Comparison Software from Tanitin. And this service um, has additional fees which are not covered by the GEM program. The other service is a cross mark. Um, and basically it exists as a, uh, as a button that gives readers quick and easy access to the current status of an item of content. Uh, including any corrections, retractions, or updates to that record. Researchers don't, uh, research does, doesn't stand still. And even after publication, articles can be updated with supplementary data or corrections. It's therefore important to know if the content being cited has been updated, corrected, or retracted. And Crossmark makes this information more visible to readers. 
with just one click, you can see if content has changed and access valuable additional metadata provided by the member, such as key publication dates, submission, revision, acceptance, also plagiarism screening status and information about licenses, handling editors and peer review. Crossmark lets readers know when a substantial change affecting the citation or interpretation has occurred and that uh, the member has updated the metadata record to reflect the new status. And back to you, Susan. Thanks, Evanda. Um, so just a couple of words in conclusion. Um, I do wanna thank you all for joining us today and hope that you found the information valuable. Um, I do wanna say that you know, with our GEM program, we hope the Crossref membership becomes more accessible to organizations that wish to join with us. Um, you know, the value of Crossref comes from our members and from the metadata that they register, um, which creates a rich and open network you know, it connects organizations, people, things, um, and is used by the global community. But building this network for the global community must include input from all of the global community. So next week, we have our second webinar in the series um, about registering your content with Crossref. So we'll talk about what a DOI is and isn't, um, what types of content you can register with us, how to register content, and then how you can go about updating and adding additional metadata. Um, and here are some links. Um, if you need further help, um, we do have documentation available, um, which can be uh, accessed at the link you see here. If you have specific technical questions, you can email our support team. And if you have questions about um, membership and joining, um, you can contact our membership team directly. Um, also, we have a community forum where you can post questions to the group um, that um, a community uh, can answer or also uh, Crossref staff can answer. Um, so that is um, it in conclusion. We have time for now for um, a guest speaker um, and so for some questions and answers. Um, oh, and I do want to say we will be sending out the slides and the recording to everyone um, later this week. Oh, Dr. Alam, did you want to introduce a guest speaker, perhaps? Yeah, so uh, now we would like to uh, request our chief guest, Dr. Sebastian Gorelis, to uh, the day they were, the day they were, uh, thank you, Dr. Jahangir, and thank you, the speakers, particularly Rosa Clark, Johansen Ovanda, and Susan Collins, to let us know the, the status of the metadata and what benefit is possible to get through the registration with the, with the metadata. We came to know that such registration is completely free of cost. And with that registration, it will be possible to increase the visibility of the research uh, uh, documents. As a researcher, we, everyone uh, used to seek the visibility of our work. We, everyone would like to get the connectivity with the international community, and we would like to get the citation. So such registration would definitely increase the, the citation, as well as visibility of our research work, as well as the connectivity without a uh, free of search. So from that viewpoint, uh, I would like to say that this is a Great lesson for, for us to come to know about the uh, services of the Crossref, uh, about the benefit of the registration to the uh, metadata of the Crossref, and about the services of the Crossref provided to the researcher. Uh, with this P word, I would like to conclude my talk here and I hope to again to join on 9th of May to come to know further regarding the DUI. Thank you. Thank Dr. you so much.
Thank you, Dr. Kamal. We appreciate. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for your wonderful speech. But before that, I would like to thank all the participants, distinguished some of the dean of the Department of Health, the faculty, uh, respected chairman, and uh, colleagues from several ministries, publishers, researchers, and participants. Thank you very much for joining today with us. And like uh, another uh, question in the like uh, question and session. However, I received a question about if some uh, like journal editor, if they would like to uh, register all the content they previously published that is not in online. So that case, the prospect with the prospect will charge any amount on. Um, if anyone has questions, please put them in the Q and A, um, and we can we can answer some live, or we can also um, my colleague Rebecca is answering them um, online as well. Any question from the participants? Uh, Uh, if anyone won't have any question, then uh, I would like to ask you a question. When you're talking about the metadata, does it mean the research metrics uh, uh, related to the article or related to the other sort of the documents? The, so the, the, the metadata for the the articles that are deposited yeah yeah. yeah yeah metadata for the articles so the meta the all of our metadata is openly available for um for anyone to query so some of that you know, we do have um organizations that are metrics uh analysts that do uh that do use our metadata um like alt metric for example um will take the metadata to use for some of their their tools and services um Members are also able to query um, for uh, articles that cite uh, their own uh, published works. So you can have an idea of how often uh, membership, uh, how often your, your articles are being cited. I don't know if that answers your question or if you're, if I'm not understanding. Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. Okay. Great. It's all right. Um, we had a question. Um, can can cross uh, for conference proceedings? Conference proceedings are a type of content that can be registered with us. Um, you can assign DOIs to it and register the metadata for conference uh, proceedings as well. Um, we have probably about ten or twelve different types of content you can register with us. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's a question if the metadata goes wrong while updating it. Okay, so if if you make an error when depositing metadata, you can re-register your metadata at any time. Um, depending on how you register your content will be will determine how that metadata is re-registered, but um, metadata can be updated at any time. Um, and we highly encourage it if you discover that there's additional metadata that you wish to add to an already registered item, you can go back in and update that or add more metadata um, whenever it becomes available. Um, we have another question about um, registering content that is um, not current content. A um, uh, uh, question here about um, journal articles that are 15 years old. Yes, you can register content for um, any content, whether it's current or decades old, and it's the same process. Um, there's no difference uh, whether an article was published last week or 10 years ago. Uh, content registration is the same process. And we highly encourage you to, if you have the resources, um, to go back and register your previously uh, published content with us. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, there's another question about registering metadata in other languages. Yes, you can. You can do that. Um, it does not have to be in English. Um, you can register uh, content in any language. Um, you can also uh, register translations so that the two, the that both versions of an article are related in the metadata as well. Um, there's a question about um, OJS plugin. We are we are going to talk a little in more depth next week in our content registration webinar about OJS. Um, OJS does have um, plugins available so that you can send your article metadata directly to Crossref um, from your OJS instance. And um, they, there are, uh, as well as the content registration plugin, there are some other plugins available that's like to send your reference metadata um, or funding data to us as well. And we'll talk a bit about more of those next week. Uh, another question about the GEM program. Is there any limit to the number of content registrations? There is not a limit. You can register as many items um, as you have available with us. We don't, we don't set a limit on that for any members, but certainly not through the, the GEM program either. Um, let's see. Uh, there is technical assistance for Crossmark, and um, I don't know, maybe Ovanda or Rosa, you could drop in the link for our Crossmark documentation um, into the question. You also could, um, our support team, support at crossref.org, could help you um, with any technical questions related to Crossmark. It is a bit of a, um, probably our most technical service as far as getting it set up um, initially. Um, but we do have some extensive documentation on that. Um, let's see, we register our content through the web deposit form. Um, if you're already a member of Crossref, um, you don't, if, and you've already registered your content, you don't have to, you don't have to re-register anything with us. Um, and you can, you know, you can you register through our web deposit form or OJS or, um, you know, through XML directly. Um, it is not, uh, you don't have to re-register anything with us again. Uh, so for, uh, it's a question about any fees for individual membership. Um, so it, uh, Crossref membership is open to organizations as opposed to individual people. So if your organization is joining Crossref, um, as part of the GEM program, there, is, there are no fees. There are no membership fees and there are no content registration fees from organizations from Bangladesh joining with Crossref. Um, There's a question, how can I cancel a DOI? Uh, so DOIs... <sighs> DOIs are permanent identifiers. They can't be deleted, but they can it, it, they can be redirected. So what I would suggest um, in the case where you are looking to withdraw a DOI is to email our support team, support at crossref.org, and explain the situation to them. Um, they, they, can, they can work with you to get that DOI redirected um, as needed. Um, for the retraction, or, or we could they get an update to um, that article, um, but they can they can help you out with that. It's there isn't a very easy answer for that uh, for me to answer here, but there are some solutions for you if you would like to talk with our technical team. Uh, there's a question about Dhaka University if they are a member. Um, I, I don't know if, if um, uh, Robika, if, if you've got uh, sugar open, if you can look to see whether Dhaka University is a member um, of Crossref right now. Um, but we can. You, uh, we can, you can uh, sorry? University of Dhaka. Yes, yep, or Dhaka University. I'm not sure how we would have it in our system. Yes, we have it. Okay. Uh, so yes, I guess they, apparently they are a member. Who will answer this question? 
Should I? Which question is that? About yeah, Dakar University? Dakar University? Sure. You already joined Crossref so yes, that please. all teachers can get the benefits. So Dhaka University uh, uh, joined with the Crossref, but through Bangladesh, not directly Dhaka University joined with the Crossref. We have the registration or we have the a collaboration with Bangla Jal, who has the registration with the cross rep. Now, Dhaka University would like to uh, have the direct registration or direct uh, joining with the cross rep, not through other channel, direct okay. registration with Bangla Jal. Not with Bangla Jal, but direct registration would like to get with the cross rep. Okay, yes. Um, I would encourage them to. Um, uh, to, con to contact our membership team, member at crossref.org. Okay. And um, they can, um, they will walk them through and uh, Rubika may be able to speak to this more. Um, they can walk them through the application process. We will need to have, uh, to work with um, with the Bangla Joel program to have that title, their titles transferred to the new account. Um, but Robika's team um, will be able to uh, to help you uh, to help them do that. Yep. For any title transfer, uh, you can contact uh, the member at crossref.org, uh, so we can process uh, with the title transfer. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Robika. Um, let's see. Yeah, so um, the, the, as mentioned, the D Dhaka University Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences is using Crossref through Bangla Joel. And if if you would like to continue to go through Bangla Joel, that's, you know, that's that's fine. If you'd like to have a separate membership to do that independently, again, you could, um, you can uh, apply for an independent membership. You'll get a new DOI prefix and you can register your content on your own. Um, but either way, you know, working through Bangla Joel, or not, it's, um, it, you know, ultimately the metadata gets to us, the content's registered, it has a DOI. So it's it's just a different, um, you know, some, if an organization wanted to work independently. Let's see here. Um, New okay, but ISSN. You do not have to have an ISSN to register content with Crossref. Um, I don't know if I don't, and I don't know the answer to this. Um, is there a subscription for ISSNs? You may I, there there are some requirements to get an ISSN. I don't know specifically what all of those are, but you do not have to have one to register um, content with us. see. Uh, so any, there's a question, any research organization can be a member of Crossref. If you produce um, research outputs, then yes, you can be a member of Crossref. And that could be, you know, do you, you uh, we, we sort of get away from the term publisher because not all organizations consider themselves publishers. But if you produce a journal or books or conference proceedings or, um, you know, any one of our content items, then yes, you can be um, a member of Crossref. There was a question about um, the relationship between Crossref and other un, uh, indexing and discovery services like Google Scholar and Web of Science. Um, a number of organizations like Web of Science and Google Scholar use uh, Crossref metadata in their tools, but they are not, um, we don't have a formal relationship with them. Um, any organization can come and use, can come and query our metadata. So um, there are a lot of organizations that use it, including Web of Science and Google Scholar. Um, so, um, uh, do we need a, uh, another question? Do we need a sponsor for Gem? No, you do not. You can join directly, independently. Um, you would you do not have to work through a sponsor at all to be part of the gym to be part of a um, uh, to be a member. 
How stuff is required for DOJ and scope is indexing? Um, I, I do not know the answer. Uh, it may be for DOAJ. I do not know the answer for Scopus. Um, they have their own set of requirements. Um, it, and it may be that they do require DOIs, um, but you would have to check the, um, you'd have to check with them directly about what the requirements are to be indexed in either. I know DOAJ has a number of, of requirements in um, CrossFit may be one of them. All right. Uh, oh, there's another question here. I'm sorry, I missed this earlier. Um, anyone can ask us metadata associated with Crossmark. Yes, um, all of our metadata is freely available through our APIs. Um, and maybe uh, Obanda or someone could drop a link in there to our REST API documentation. Um, uh, there's a number of different ways, different types of ways to query our metadata, um, depending on sort of the, the, the format you'd like it in and uh, sort of what abilities you have to, to query. We have very simple interfaces and we have much more complex interfaces. So um, it's uh, maybe best to take a look at the different ways to query um, and how to format the queries in order to get the specific metadata that you're looking for. I don't see any more questions um, at the moment, but if you do have any, please drop us an email um, and we are happy to follow up with some additional, what are the challenges? Oh, here's a question. What are some of the challenges facing Crossref? Um, well, I think uh, a couple of the things that I mentioned earlier is that you know we're really looking to work to eliminate some of the barriers for organizations globally to join Crossref. And, the GEM program is one of them. Um, we've also, we have a sponsors program, which does offer some um, support <laughs> organizations who need help with, you know, technical barriers or local language support or being able to pay in local currencies. Um, we also um, uh, have uh, our relation, ongoing relationship with PKP, who um, we, we work with to develop some, some less technical ways of registering content. Uh, there's so many of our members that use OJS as a publishing platform that um, sort of creating this partnership with them has really helped folks to, to register content with us in a far less technical way. So I think you know, some of the challenges are getting, finding ways to work more globally um, with organizations as we're seeing now, um, we're seeing about you know, half of our, our membership are coming from Latin America, parts of Asia, um, Eastern Europe, we're seeing a lot more members coming from those areas, but there are still a lot of areas where we're not seeing a lot of growth. And so we're looking to work with those communities to help you know, make membership more accessible. Um, question, subscription is for one year or a lifetime. Well, uh, it's, it's technically it's, it, it renews automatically each year. So um, there, you wouldn't have to uh, reapply each year. Um, in our systems, uh, all memberships automatically renew each year. So there's nothing that you would need to do um, to renew. Um, and uh, members may cancel at any time. There's no obligation um, to continue. If you did cancel, your DOI still work, provided your websites still work. Um, but, but yes, there's no... Um, there's no requirement to, to reapply each year. Um, and for, like I mentioned, for, for the countries that are eligible for the GEM program, there, um, there are no fees that are required to become a member. Susan, may I uh, add it at additional information? Yes. So I know some participants already our Crossref members. So, but maybe some journals hasn't registered uh, or hasn't got any DOI. Uh, so for the journals hasn't uh, got the DOI, so for existing member, 
So you can use the same DOI for all published content uh, under the same uh, organization. So for example, if University of Dhaka, because University of Dhaka already cross track member and University of Dhaka consists of so many department or faculties and consists of many journals. So all the department or faculties or journal can be uh, used, uh, can use the same DOI prefix, but uh, you need to uh, permission from the existing uh, registered contact for the University of Dhaka. So uh, if you would like to know who is the registered contact, so you can uh, email us uh, at member at crossref.org. So yeah, that's the information. Thank you, Rabika. It's helpful. Okay. There is a raised hand. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Atla Hossein. Let me see if I can turn. Uh, if you want, to, I'll I'll allow to talk. Here we go. And you. Yeah. Can you hear me, please? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Alta Hussain from uh, MIST, Military Institute of Science and Technology, Dhaka, Bangladesh. And I am also the professor of nuclear science engineering department, and as well as the assistant editor of MIST International Journal of Science and Technology. Uh, actually, we have already registered under cross-reference, and I am the contact point of that one. I had uh, basically two questions. One question regarding the membership, uh, the fee that we paid every year, uh, the two type of fees, one is uh, per article, another one is uh, about the yearly registration fee. So uh, should uh, uh, how many years we need to continue this uh, fee that uh, as, as a member of that trust reference membership about our journal? So no, I'm going yes, forward. So you. starting in January of this year, there would, there would be no fee for members from Bangladesh. Okay. They have paid one in the past when the when this program didn't exist, but now that it does, you don't have to pay that fee. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, Professor. so, yeah. okay, thank you very much for your clarification, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have, uh, I want to add additional information. So I've checked uh, our record for Military Institute of science and technology. So you are uh, you are already eligible for gem uh, yes. program. So you don't yes, worry yes. about it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. There's um, one more hand raised um, for uh, Satesh Sandra Bakar. So I'm gonna unmute just a moment. There you go. Please ask your question. Thank you very much. Uh, I have already raised my questions uh, regarding uh, this cross reference because uh, Dhaka University, a uh, journal of pharmaceutical sciences, this under the Faculty of Pharmacy, is already been registered as cross reference through Bangladesh. And as they mentioned, the professor of this MIST, in the same way, about the, regarding the uh, fees whether we'll be able to be waived uh, when we'll be the uh, member directly to the cross-reference. And uh, I'm very happy to be get to it today, the members of the cross-reference team for uh, organizing such a good information regarding the cross-reference and other things. And at the next uh, meeting, and this in 9th May, definitely we'll be able to detail information regarding the DOI and mm -hmm. the other things as well. Thank you very much. To all of you for uh, clarifying all these things. Already when the questions have been clarified by the other Rebecca. Thank you very much. All. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We hope to see you next week on our next webinar. Next week, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Jahangir and CrossF team for your valuable information and to enlighten us regarding the CrossF activities and also future indication regarding the 9th May uh, uh, webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you okay. so much, sir, for your valuable time today. Okay, thank you. See you again. See you again. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank bye -bye. you, everyone. Bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, see you one night. Thank you for joining us.